Smokin' Joe Walker comes into this bout with a 13-0-1 record with three knockouts, fighting out of Akron, Ohio, a place that has produced some notable boxers. Uh, he does have a little bit of pop to his punches, so his record belies the slight danger he presents here. Walker represented the United States in international meets as an amateur, but his pro record has been fairly nondescript. Uh, he had a draw against future super middleweight champion Steve Little. Other than that, he has fought a fighter named Wardell Langston three times in a row, winning all three, but that lets you know the level of competition he has been in with. With three of them, and Terry Norris from San Diego with eight KO. Away they go, scheduled for six or less. Joe Walker spent most of this year until September when he fought Tony Hopkins by beating Wardell Langston. He fought him three times in a row, twice in Akron and once in Toronto, Canada. Managed to knock him out once and win decisions in the other two. I like it so much, he did it three straight times. Go, Terry Norris, we have seen him before here on ESPN. Very quick fighter. Good hand speed right now. Uh, Walker's going after him, but there you see the, the, the hand speed of Norris coming back. Walker just uh, looked like a thrown off balance there. Just slipped following through in one of those punches as he landed about half a dozen good ones to Norris. Double jab, Joe. Double jab. Throw that jab. Of course, he's only lost uh, in August against Derek Kelly in uh, the forum in California. Lost the decision to 10. Truly lost that fight. Did not perform well. He had the right conditioning. And, uh, he says he learned from that. Oh, he got hit with a big right by Walker. And he's holding on. Norris, the younger brother of our main event fighter tonight, is going to challenge Larry Alexander for the heavyweight title in North America. Orland Norris. He's 22, and this young man, two years younger, Terry, is 20. Trains with Orlin out on uh, Rich Mambo, the manager Joe Sajadovich out at his ranch in the San Diego area. What a complex they have out there for boxers. It's some interesting training techniques. Some a little different than we're used to. They've had good success. That's the halfway mark of the first round. Terry told us this morning he went down to welterweight for that bout you talked about that he lost. And, uh, that isn't the right weight for him. He's back where he wants to be now as a junior middle. He's really comfortable. With good left hook by. Oh, another one. Another one. And Walker is standing down. Curtis admonishing uh, Morris for hitting him while he's down, but he is in big trouble. I have to he say, is... he may be disqualified, and I don't think that's wrong. I don't know. We'll see what Joey Curtis does. Walker I... is in desperate difficulty sitting down there, legs shooting out in all directions. He may be disqualified, and that's not wrong if he is. Terry Norris is a, is a delightful young man. He's a good a good boxer. What's going to happen here? What's the ruling? It wouldn't be wrong if they did it, I'll tell you. And, and I think Terry Norris is a good young man and a good boxer, but that was wrong. And we've seen a lot of that in boxing today. There it is. He hit him when he's down, and he has been disqualified. And Walker gets out of it, but... Norris just over anxious. He did not have to do that, as you saw. And there's, excuse me, Don, I didn't mean to interrupt you. There is no argument on it. There shouldn't be from Terry Norris. He's distressed with himself more than anything else. A very good call by Joey Curtis. A very good call. Let's take a look at it, and I think you'll see just how blatant it was. Some of the fans booing. Now, there he is down. Now, he's not down for a long, oh, no way. You have to disqualify the man. It's a must because he was already on the ground. He cocked once, reloaded, and then hit him when he was down. No need to do that. None at all. Terry would be the first to tell you he made a he bad would. mistake. I think he would, and certainly his camp, Rich Wombo and Joe Sajadovich are gentlemen. They know it was wrong. Well, let's hear it officially now, the decision by Joey Curtis from Chuck Dahl. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joey Curtis has disqualified Terry Norris for hitting his opponent after he was down. The winner is Joe Walker. This is one of the few times I've seen a fighter celebrate a disqualification win, but uh, Walker just gets a ticket to nowhere as less than a month later he's stopped by Quincy Taylor, which begins a downward slide that he never recovers from as he loses seven of his next eight fights. His only win comes when an opponent remains on a stool with a dislocated shoulder. And the disqualification loss doesn't affect Norris at all, as he's two and a half years away from winning the WBC 154-pound title, and he becomes one of the division's greatest fighters in its history.